Hello, Mark. Thank Hello, you so sir. much for being with us. It's always a pleasure and pleasure always enjoy being in your company. And it's, it's, uh, you know, it's really important for me to share, not only in a clinic situation, what, what we're actually thinking, what, what makes us tick, and what inspires us. Um, and you know, you've had the, the journey, and I, and I don't mind saying this because I think it's important from the point of view, uh, getting, of, ultimately our goal is to be that musician, that player who plays the, the shows, who makes a living, plays great music and all of that. In the beginning though, you have to do a lot of preparation. That preparation starts um, as a kid, you, you get attracted to the drum set, and then the next step, you study with somebody, and then you play, you go to uh, study situations like a, a COSA camp or any, any other camp or any, that kind of situation. And then the people you run into, the, the people who affect your life, the experiences you have, things, uh, you were uh, recently in, in Cuba with us, for example, and then all the work that you have done in development, and then you worked uh, with David Bowie, that, that whole journey. I know this is a lot of, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really loaded question, but I, I'd like to start with that, and, and if you can take us through your journey and what you suggest and your thoughts on all of this. Yeah, well, to be honest, um I'm trying to, you know, I when I started playing drums, I had no expectations. I just started started to take some lessons, and it was kind of just um, something to do. You know, my parents all, always wanted me to be busy and active, and um, drums seemed like, you know, an interesting thing to, to do. Um, so it never had this weight to it. It just it felt like... It wasn't until later that I realized how much joy it was bringing me and that maybe, you know, this might become a big part of my life and maybe what I start to do with my life, but not until much, much later. And it was really, um, you know, I'm, I'm very protective of that initial relationship with music because it was um, just really joyful and innocent, you know, and, and there's many things along the way that you know, whether it's uh, the business or money or a uh, resume or maybe you should play with it. You know, those things, um, I kind of, they're distractions from that initial relationship. And the, and um, things like COSA and, you know, Joe Bergamini, my first teacher, the, the experiences right away were so warm and really helped me fall in love with drums and music. And um, I... It might, uh, this, I hope this isn't, uh, you know, seem like a, an overstatement, but I'm, I, I'm, th I think the same way every time I sit down that I did then. It's like, again, protecting that relationship, trying to um, remind myself, always remember why I sat down in the first place and that feeling that I got. And it's that feeling that I'm always chasing, because that's that feeling inspires me to practice. That feeling inspires me to keep going. That feeling inspires me to try to play with great musicians. And and then once you start that and you meet other like-minded people, then you're just passing that feeling back and forth, and it just keeps keeps going. So all of the specific opportunities I've had have been a result of chasing that that joy and trying to not make any decisions that would conflict with that, you know, path. Yeah. No, no, it's always interesting because I had the same experience and I'm sure many people had. Uh, when you start, you're just playing music and it's so much fun, it just pulls you into it. And I remember with my group, it was a lot of fun. I was maybe 15 years old and we were like the, the Beatles in our neighborhood, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we played the park, and everybody showed up, we filled up the park, mm -hmm. and somebody actually came up to us and said, you know, we're playing a dance, and we're gonna pay you $75. <laughs> that, was, that was so foreign. Right, it was, right, right, and, right. And, and we said, like, what? And, but, okay, that's great, but let's, let's do the music, and then we got that out of the way. Of course, you have to take care of business. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. but the idea of, of keeping that, and I'm glad you said that, because that's really the motor that keeps us going. Because mm -hmm. no matter how much money in the world, how much fame, it's really, it's, it's just, it's like an outer coating. Yeah. If you don't have that, that thing that keeps you ticking or la raison d'être, like the things you, you do things for, then, then you get lost. Yep, yeah. And I think um, situations like this, and speaking from my own experience, you know, I have such vivid memories of those camps 
and we just said hello to Horacio. He was there, and I remember him being particularly warm. You know, and I was just a kid. I mean, I was, yeah, I was just another guy. I, I, I wasn't playing in any particularly great way. or You know, I was just happy to be there and hungry. And, you know, to have a guy like him make a point, he gave me his phone number, and I don't think I ever used it, but still, just that kind of sentiment um, only made me more hungry and more excited to just keep going, you know, and that's where I met John Riley, who I eventually started studying with, and, and of course, just knowing you throughout the years and now being able to work together is, is really exciting, um, but yeah, it's just trying to chase the, you know, and that's the beautiful thing, um, I think stylistically, you know, I might not have much in common with a guy like Horacio, but I'd like to believe I don't even I don't I don't even want to put myself in the same sentence as him. I say this very humbly, but I think uh, on at the core, you know, we're doing it for similar reasons. You know, just yeah, just looking for the high that music can bring, and you know, if I ever lost that, I I would just. Might as well go do something else, you know? <laughs> but I, but what music brings me, that feeling that I get and continue to get, I haven't found anywhere else. So it's, you know, I'm just chasing it. Yeah, and, and, and the other, that's very interesting, and I'm glad you, you brought that up. The other interesting thing is in, in, in your musical responsibility, now that you have done all of this work and have had those opportunities and created those opportunities also for yourself, and, and brought yourself to a position in the musical community to be a leader in, in the kind of a, a kind of a style that you're known for now. What is how do you see it and what do you see that as a responsibility or, or where do you see that going uh, in the music? How influential or how effective now that you're you're in that position as any great professional is and you've certainly created a, a style which is was recognizable. And how, how should we look at that responsibility? Take from your end, and then what would you suggest to someone else mm -hmm. in the music? I think for me, the drum world is a, is a fascinating place, and I love it. You know, I, again, I, I attended COSA. I was in the front row of all the local drum clinics. I, I am a drum fan, you know. Um, but for me, the most important thing in these situations is to address the big picture stuff, the music playing with other musicians, interacting with other musicians, um, because that's the thing that I've gotten the most from. You know, I love the drums, I love playing the drums, but I really love to play music with other people. And I think the more context we can bring to these environments, the better. And I, that's the thing when I see, um, and any chance I can, I try to grab my bass player and bring him with me to a clinic or something like that. Even just that little bit of, of um, context, which you do really well. I mean, the experience in Cuba was, it was bands, it was ensembles, how to play together, how to play with other people. And I think that's huge, you know, because I'm not so interested in just playing alone. It's, it's, there is a joy to it, but for me, it doesn't compare, sorry, it doesn't compare to really being in the moment with other people that you trust and really searching for you know new new ideas as did, was the cuba experience uh pushing did did that push you uh, further into your own search and and of your music that you are known for i think so yeah i, I it was an incredible experience it was my first time and certainly won't be my last i i'm as i was flying out i was trying to figure out when I could come back. And um, yeah, just to see, again, whether the music I make is similar or not to the music that they're making down there, just to see guys and girls just living, truly living the music. It might sound like a stereotype or something or just something to say, but I witnessed it's just all day, every day. And it didn't feel like, oh, I'm going to go practice or now we're going to rehearse. It was just, it's there. It's, at all times, it can be, uh, you wake up and it's just, now we're playing. It never felt like, uh, oh, they're just trying an idea out or practicing. It. It's just music. It's living it. Yeah, exactly. And it was really inspiring. And yeah, um, to try to bring that home and apply it to the stuff I'm working on is uh, a challenge, but it requires the inspiration of witnessing that and yeah, trying to 
see how it can be used. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I know we, we went, we're going to keep this short, so I can go on with a million other Me questions. Too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. But we'll pick it up at another time. Okay, great. But yeah. what would you suggest to future uh, people listening to this conversation and saying, you know, what are the things that make you take and what do you think you should be working on to make the world a better place from a drummer point of view, including making it better for yourself? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just try to just keep going. That's number one. When things are great, keep going. When things aren't great, keep going. Um, and I think for me, uh, just supporting the music around you the best you can. Um, and I feel like, um, again, I just want to have the chance to make music with great musicians. So I've kind of, I, I think, okay, try to assess what the, the main responsibilities are. And if you really have those things, um, you know, strong, then people will want to play with you. And then it's from those opportunities that you can express your own individuality and creativity and all those things and really um, pursue maybe what it is that you uniquely have to say. But um, not before really dealing with the details and the fundamentals because that creativity can only be built upon that foundation. Um, and I'm always relying on that foundation to explore new ideas. So sometimes we can get maybe a little anxious and jump to the creativity thing without dealing with the, the foundation. So for me, I mean, that's, that's where I live. I'm always chipping away and, and building that. And that's what gives me the confidence to explore new stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. My Mark, pleasure. Always a Great pleasure. Great to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Again soon.